So diving into uh, training up for Rocky Raccoon, what did your train up look like? Obviously, this is probably the most mileage, the most volume you've ever trained at. Yep. What did your training look like throughout this prep leading up to race day? Yeah, uh, I would say over overall, super well, went great. Um, especially, like I said, I prepped for a marathon, um, whether that was, you know, a proper, well-informed prep, I prepped, quote unquote. Um, so I had a little bit of mileage on my legs, but I didn't run much this summer. So I'd say that kind of that use it or lose it happened. And I definitely like declined a little bit. Uh, so when I started this prep, it was, I was running just a little bit, maybe 15, 10, 15 miles a week, kind of top, you know, top of the strength training. Um, and so I knew going in that I might not be able to handle the volume that a hundred K actually calls for due to like injury prevention, trying to be smart, not, um, tax my body in other ways like nervous system and, you know, hormones and things like that. Just all the other problems you get with overtraining. And so I found a good sweet spot around 40 miles a week. Uh, that's kind of like was my big weeks. And again, that's relative for me. Um, I think most programs would call for more than that. Um, but that was, you know, it would be about a three week build hit that 40 miles a week on average. And then I'd have like a week taper three weeks again, week taper, three weeks again, week taper. Um, and we're great. I definitely had some injuries, but, um, again, I knew I was in it for myself. I wasn't in it to compete. And so for me, it was, I'd rather go in injury free, healthy, than I got a, you know, one extra long run in, I got one extra, you know, mile or hour in this week. Um, so I just played it really smart. I played it cautious. Um, but I still stuck to the plan as much as I could and committed, um, to every detail that I could of it and just made those runs, um, most, you know, valuable, um, and put a lot of thought into nutrition and, and things other than just getting in mileage. So, yeah. And, and what was your, your time for your hundred K? It was 11 hours and 50 minutes, which that was shocking to me when <laughs> everyone was asking, you know, what's, what's your goal time? Uh, what are you shooting for? And to me, I was like, the worst thing I can do in my first ultra is try to set a time. Like I, that just seems absurd. Uh, so I was like, I have no expectation. Just plan on being there with me all day. In my head, I was like, maybe around like 15 hours. I hadn't calculated out much what that pace was. Came in around 11 hours and 50 minutes. I'm not sure exactly what that pace calculates. So I think like low 11s a minute per mile pace. But dude, so good. I was shocked. I was absolutely shocked. I was like, am I like taking the wrong turns? Like, is, am I actually at 62 miles? Like, it was weird. It was an interesting um, course too. Yeah, yeah. It was crazy. Yeah, so I finished... 100 miler in, in 19 hours, yeah. 13 minutes. Quick, man. Um, my prep, so this was probably the most mileage I've ever done for a prep. Comparing it to Leadville 100, Leadville 100, my mileage was lower than it probably should have been. Reasoning was I found out I got selected for Leadville 100 during a six month triathlon prep which was supposed to be an Ironman and Ironman Texas got canceled. We pivoted to challenge Cancun and um, I went right into Ironman or uh, into Rocky or sorry, Leadville 100 yeah. prep. They all blend at this point. They all, they're all blending. It's been a crazy year. Went right into Leadville 100 prep after triathlon prep, kept mileage a little lower. It was summer too. My body was just pretty taxed. And then did Leadville 100 realized it needed more mileage. So I, hired Zach Bitter as my coach and we got mileage at its peak 75 to 85, maybe 90 miles tops a week. But that's where I also started experimenting some overtraining wear and tear and, and micro injuries. Um, I was doing a lot of like long runs on the weekends. My, my long runs were 30 miles yep. and I did like four 30 milers throughout yep. the prep. Definitely the best aerobic conditioning I've ever been, but I really started to miss speed training and tempo and threshold work during this ultra prep. But the one big difference I made in this Rocky Raccoon prep, as opposed to Leadville 100, volume mileage was higher. And you can look at volume two different ways. You can look at it as time on feet or distance on feet. I personally have always just been a distance person. I like tracking distance over time. And then monitoring that through a prep. Um, so that's kind of like where I got mileage to during this Rocky Raccoon prep. 
I will say one thing I've seen in the ultra space and the endurance space in the community online is everyone thinks there's a certain amount of mileage you have to hit for an ultra. Yeah. You'll hear it like, Oh, if you're not doing hundred miles a week, if you're not doing 120 miles a week. If you're not doing 150 miles a week, you're, you're messing up. You're missing out. That is very individually specific because you can't go from 60 miles a week to 120 miles a week. Yep. There's, you cannot do that. Yep. That's too big of a jump. You have to know your body, understand your body. That's why like these cookie cutter programs out there do not work most of the time because it's not taking the individual, their, their training experience or level into consideration. And it's ultimately setting people up for failure or injuries. Yep. So I found that, you know, 75 to 90 miles a week tops was perfect for me. And actually going into marathon prep now, we're going to keep mileage around 75 to 80 miles a week. Uh, but it's not going to be these big 30 mile runs. It's going to be the daily runs just increase a little bit over, over the program. So that was my prep in a nutshell. You know, like you said, an ultra is all about body durability. Mm-hmm. If you can only get to 20 miles and your body can't hold up for the next 40, 60, 80 miles, you're not going to finish the race. Got to go into it strong, focus on nutrition, knowing your body can handle certain types of volume, and then build into that program based off your personal experience and your personal training level. And that ultimately sets you up for success. But I think there's this, this issue in endurance programming where it assumes that every runner is the same with the same experience. And just like you, like keeping mileage lower, you felt better. You went into Rocky Raccoon, you you crushed. That's like a testament to it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think self-awareness, whether you have a coach or not, just self-awareness and being your like own feedback mechanism is like one of the most powerful tools. Um, And again, like not comparing your plan to someone else's or, you know, you get on Strava and see this guy's training for a hundred K or hundred miler and he's doing that many miles. Like, again, it goes back to like, that's what makes running so awesome is because, well, my journey is I'm doing this many miles and we're probably still going to both have a successful race. Um, it's so specific to each person. So the quicker you can get that ego out of the way and just say, this is, this is my plan. This is how I'm going to approach it. This is the feedback I'm getting from my body. These are the tweaks I need to make, man. I feel like that's so much more powerful than just, again, stick into a cookie cutter plan and saying, well, because it's on paper that I'm supposed to run this far, that's what I'm going to do today. Like from the beginning, I was like, I can't do that. It's just not going to work. So when you implement ego into endurance training, it is the fastest way to oh injury. Yep. I was there. I, I experienced early on and that's, I got that reality check very quick. Um, yeah, it's ego is, it, that's where you get injured. That's where you start to see the detrimental effects and Sometimes it's hard to, to see that it was ego too. Sometimes you need people in your life or again, to be self-aware to, to know that it's ego. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause you start looking at everything else. What am I doing wrong? Where, where am I not, uh, you know, where the dots are connecting. And a lot of times it's just, man, you're just not running your own race. You're not staying in your own lane for this experience for you. So, so what yeah. did your taper look like going into Rocky? Yeah. Uh, for me, the last two weeks were, um, pretty, pretty slow and low miles. Um, I had my last big weekend. Um, I guess it would have been two, two weekends out. So I had a 20 mile run and the next day, I think I did like a 10 mile run. And for me, that was a big weekend. Um, again, kind of going what you said, like those long runs take a lot out of you. And, but they're also a great indicator of like where you're at. Like if I can't do a 20 mile run and if I can do a 20 mile run and not be on the couch the rest of the day, my nervous system just shot and you know just be yeah just down and out the rest of the day like maybe i'm not ready or maybe it's just like maybe this can be really really hard and it was cool because at the beginning of prep not to go too far off tan like on a tangent but at the beginning of prep this 20 mile runs and i know we've talked about this dude they i would be on the couch the rest of the day just like brain fog can't work on anything feel like i can't hold a conversation just eat drink water foam roll watch tv i'm out for the rest of the day no i'm doing nothing this saturday and then towards the end, those 20 mile runs, like you, you felt them, you, you were hungry after a little tired, but you know, hour or two later, it was like, all right, like I feel normal again, you know, a little bit of brain fog, but, um, yeah, that was really cool. So had that one last big weekend, 
20 mile run next day, 10 mile run for me. That was, that was awesome. Um, and then I spent the next two weeks, low, slow miles, foam rolling, making sure hitting calories every day, water intake, just recovering essentially. Um, and it, it's funny cause that taper, it messes with your head, man. Like I was like, am I losing fitness? Like, and it was funny because sometimes I almost felt more sore or more just like legs were heavy and just kind of sluggish on that low, easy miles. And I did like peak prep, like to a certain point, but I was like, am I losing mileage? Am I like, is everything just hurting and injured? Like what's going on? And the race day, the body, that's when you see it. You're like, oh wow, this is why I had to be patient the last two weeks and this, and just embrace that like easiness. So yeah, nothing, nothing crazy. I think I, I was dealing with a couple little injuries. So I think I ran like, yeah, 10 to 20 miles those last two weeks. Very easy, maybe even lower than I probably should have been. But again, being self-aware, I knew I had some injuries and I decided, or ain't going into that taper, I'm going to go in injury free, healthy, rather than try to hit this taper exactly just perfect for what the program says. Did any of your injuries flare up during the race? No, which was crazy. All prep I dealt with, IT band tightness, which then led to uh, some pain like on the outside of your knee. A lot of runners deal with it. Um, dealt with that very early on in the prep. Kind of went away. Hip flexors were still tight. Um, no, actually, it was like injuries that I had never experienced that flared up during the race. But uh, overall, the race was super healthy. I think really just like my feet hurt the worst and all prep, like my feet never hurt. Um, and then again, about a week out, they started to like flare up. And then during the race, it was my feet that, that really hurt. But other than that, it felt great. It was really weird, actually. <laughs> I find that with every race I've done is it's like the week or two before the taper starts. Yeah. All of these injuries pop up. I think it's more mental than physical. Yep. To be honest, I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Like before Leadville, mm. I had quad strains and I couldn't even run five miles on my quads. I had to take some time off before, you know, Leadville. And then before Rocky, two weeks, it was like a week before the taper started, my metatarsals, which I've never had issue with in my life, which are the bottom of my feet, were so swollen. And I was trying everything and anything to get rid of this metatarsal pain. So at this point, though, I know this just is going to happen to me. Like at the peak of training before taper, these injuries are going to show up during a taper decrease volume a lot going to the race injury disappears. I'm like, I, I know it's like this, this pattern injury shows up. I get nervous that it's going to affect the race come race day. It's gone. Just, it doesn't exist anymore. And then obviously during the race, like, like you said, new things show up, but that's expected, especially on uneven train yep. ultra miles but if you, if you finish an ultra marathon, you feel hundred percent healthy, you don't have any micro injuries. I mean, that's like a golden ticket. Yeah. I, that's actually a really good point. The terrain, uh, diversity, because I didn't run a ton of trails leading into this and man, I felt like my legs felt better on these trails than they, than I did leading up running all like road miles. Um, again, I went in with tight hip flexors, it band stuff, no metatarsal or, you know, foot injury. Um, and it sounds like we kind of flipped where now you're kind of dealing with a little bit of hip tightness, your feet are good. And I'm dealing with my hips are great. My feet, my feet suck right now. Um, but terrain, like that diversity of terrain actually is really interesting. Cause I've been trying to put the pieces together of why didn't my hip flexors like get really tight and feel like my legs wouldn't lift. I couldn't pick my knees up, which happens like all the time when I run normal on the road. So that'll be interesting to see moving forward when I get, when I get back into running in the next week. Um, what that looks like. Hey guys, thanks for checking out the video. And if you enjoyed it, please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future releases. And if you want to watch the full episode, go right here and click on the video to my left.